Ladies and gentlemen, the following episode is scheduled for one fall. Coming down the aisle are your hosts of In The Click, Baby Huey and Brian Pronick. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, back at it for a very special episode of In The Click. Joining me right now is someone I've been a fan of for a very long time. You know her for her time in WWE as Lana, but now she is the star of The Surreal Life. It's actress, model, and former WWE superstar CJ Perry. How's it going, CJ? Hi, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's super excited to be talking to you again. It's been a few years, I think, since you and I have talked, but yeah, super excited that you're going to be on, uh, I guess you could say, the reboot of The Surreal Life, which premieres this Monday, October 24th with back-to-back episodes at 9 p.m. on VH1. So, CJ, listen, I love the original incarnation of The Surreal Life back in the early 2000s. So I'm just curious, and for anyone who maybe didn't watch that initial run back in the early 2000s, is the premise of the show the same? Yes. there's. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. It is the re-imaging of it. It is the 2022 version of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's... You're putting eight celebrities in a house um, from all different walks of life, all different cultures and um, races and religions and careers, and putting us in a house with no doors and <laughs> um, not telling us what's happening any of the any day, taking us um, out on activations where we have no idea what the activation is, and also taking our phones away. So um, yeah, Google me not having Google at first was an extreme struggle. However, it made me talk to people and learn about people for who they are instead of what Google and headlines have to say about them. Yeah, yeah. So that no, that that's really you know interesting to to hear about that. And just for you, like I saw the like the teaser trailer online, and it looks like it's going to be absolutely chaotic, but fun, all that good stuff. The cast, just to name a few, you got Dennis Rodman, Frankie Munez, Kim Coles. I, uh, of course, Stormy Daniels. So um, I'm just curious, like, what was it like living in a house for like two weeks with Dennis Rodman? I mean, did you guys like talk politics? I know he's been very public with his you know, friendship with Kim Jong Un, but what was it like living with Dennis Rodman of all people? Um, it was everything you could ever imagine. Um, Dennis definitely lived up to his reputation, that's for sure. And But it was, you know, it's crazy because I know Dennis um, from basketball, from the Chicago Bulls. Mm-hmm. I was a huge Chicago Bulls fan. My dad was. Um, I watched him with Hulk Hogan and WCW. I mean, he brought, for me, brought so much awareness about wrestling like I was watching him in wrestling because I was a fan of him at Chicago Bulls so it was crazy to see him in the house he I couldn't believe it I was like oh my god let's talk about wrestling how was it in WCW with Hulk Hogan so we immediately bonded over wrestling and being athletes and you know just the conversations a lot of time you know he brought up a lot of sometimes hard conversations um, for me, like basically telling me I should retire from wrestling. Um, so you'll have to see my reaction and what I feel about it on the show, but um, tune in. Um, but actually, I didn't know about the Korea thing because I didn't have Google and I didn't know that. And so I actually, you know, was getting slightly anxiety and actually tripping over my own two feet because I was so anxious that I didn't have my phone to Google people and find out all the tea about them. And, um, actually, um, Miro, um, kind of would give me some information, um, whenever I was able to talk to him on the show or Tamar. And then on top of all of that, we really got to see another side of Dennis. Like he was really able to open up about things from his past that like none of us knew. And, um, it like just maybe have a lot of empathy for him because, uh, yeah, I don't know how different I, who's to say how I would be and how I would be acting if I had gone through the same experiences. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I'm really fascinated to see what your response is when he tells you about, uh, you know, retiring from wrestling, because I think a lot of us still want to see you be active with that. And so, you know, I, I, I'm curious, you know, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan. And your know, last time we talked, it was about wrestling. So, you know, I, I am kind of curious, though, with the state of WWE, you know, Vince is gone. Triple H is now head of creative. Stephanie is, you know, co-chairman. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, 
where are you at right now in your own career with wrestling? Do you see yourself maybe want to go back to WWE or would you prefer maybe pursuing AEW where your husband Miro is at? Uh, I would, I mean, I'm all, I'm open to everything in life. I, if I put my dreams in a box and um, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, Triple H, he's a genius. Stephanie's a genius. I got hired by Triple H. He paired me with Miro, helped really, um, you know, helped really cultivate that, um, our start 2014, that story and that gimmick and those characters, he really, really helped me develop the ravishing Russian. So I think he is an incredible creative mind. I think he is an incredible storyteller and entertaining. And I, you know, I would, of course, if, if, if the story is right, if it makes sense, I'm always open to go back to WWE and tell compelling stories and same with AEW. I'm totally open to that too. I would, I love working with my husband and um, creating and, telling stories. Um, my biggest thing is like, I don't want to do anything mediocre. Is that a mediocre? Mm -hmm. you see, the Eastern Europeans coming out right now. <laughs> I don't want to do anything <laughs> average. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be average. And okay. I think that's what Dennis Rodman was saying to me. It's like, don't be, don't be good. Do something that you're great at. And so I want, if I come back, when I come back to wrestling, I want it to be a great story and be compelling. And, um, so until then, I, I don't have to go back until I, I feel like, okay, this is going to be great. And um, I look forward to it because there's nothing like the wrestling fans and having that emotional connection with the crowd and with the fans. I love, I love our fans. There's nothing like it. Yeah, no, I, I totally respect that. And, you know, waiting out for the right opportunity, I totally understand. But, you know, talking about stories and, you know, stuff that you were a part of, I mean, uh, you know, Rusev Day when Miro was in WWE as Rusev and the whole Rusev Day just took off with him and Aiden English. I'm always kind of curious. You know, we know how that story ended and how it played out. I'm always kind of curious, though. It was so over. The fans love it, the merch, everything. But do you feel the Rusev Day storyline and all that kind of ended too soon? Um, I feel that Vince had an idea of how he wanted the simplest way of putting it for all the listeners that might not be as familiar with wrestling is Vince McMahon is, was the director, the Steven Spielberg of our show. Mm -hmm. And um, just like any television show or movies is there's casting and, you know, you're kind of, it comes down to the exec of the network, to the showrunner. And if they see you, if they want to cast you as a villain, you know, that's their choice. And I think at the end of the day, Vince loved Miro as a villain. And so that was the, really the bottom line of the struggle is like he wanted him to be his Bulgarian brute, 300 pound, crazy villain. And, um, you know, I mean, it's his, it was his company still is. So um, and that was his creative vision. And I think that was always that was always the conflict of it, gotcha. of it all, really, to come down to the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally Yeah, understand. I could have a ton of opinions, but <laughs> it's, it's show business at the end of the day. Exactly. And whoever's and, in charge is in charge. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally understand that. I get that. Um, you know, listen, I know, I know we're running short on time, but I just do want to ask one other thing, you know, um, you know, towards your end of your time with WWE, you know, you had that program with Nia Jax, and, you know, for – what was it like nine weeks? I think it was, you know, she kept putting uh, the Samoan drop you through a table. I was kind of wondering, like, you know, after like maybe three or four weeks, was there a point where you're like, guys, like, can we change it up? Like, you know, this hurts going through a table so much. Was there like, like an end game? Like, what was the point of it going on for so long as it did? I, um, well, ironically, I really enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it definitely hurt. You're going through a commentary table, which is much thicker than a normal table. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a beautiful Samoan dragon uh, is, is dropping you and landing on you. So there's nothing that doesn't hurt about it. But I, I mean, that's why... That's why I wrestled. Like it's not, it, it is painful, but I I love it. There's nothing like it in the world, and um, it it just happened to be that you know Miro had 
did a podcast that day and then it released that morning and he was asked for a question of like, do you think um, CJ will get punished for you and what you're saying in AEW about the company? And that night I started going through tables. It just was coincidence. Mm -hmm. And then the fans this is why I love our fans. Like they just like had my back and they were like, screw WWE for punishing Lana. And so they decided to run with it. They're like, whoa, she's, I think we can get her over as a baby face now. And that was like never like originally the intention, but they just kept on going with it and running with it. So I was like, cool. Like there's a story here. Nia and I had great um, chemistry. It was very much a David Goliath story. And I think people understand it. People understand that type of story. So I'm very, very thankful. And um, you guys should subscribe to cjperry.com to um, let me dive more into telling these wrestling stories as well as the tea on our VH1 show, Surreal Life, that's yeah, coming out. Yeah, no, listen, CJ, and I know you got to run. No, thank you. I was just going to say, yes, yeah, cjperry.com. I know that's where you've been posting a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. All your content goes there, so I encourage everyone – Check that out as well. Listen, just big fan. Respect everything you do as a manager. I love that you're, you know, a big fan of Miss Elizabeth, Paul Heyman, Stephanie McMahon, all that stuff. So uh, mm. I, I'm down to support you any way I can. So I encourage everyone tune in for the premiere of the Surreal Life this Monday, October 24th. Back to back episodes, 9 p.m. on VH1. Thank you, CJ, for making the time. I hope we can do this again real soon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Talk to you later. Bye bye. There you have it. Thank you again to CJ Perry for being on the show. Remember to watch the premiere of The Surreal Live on Monday, October 24th with back-to-back episodes at 9 p.m. on VH1. Check out her website, cjperry.com. You can follow CJ Perry on Twitter and Instagram at the CJ Perry. All right, Clicksters, let's go home now. Remember to subscribe to In The Click on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We're also on a ton of other major podcast platforms. Help the show out by rating, reviewing, leave a comment, and share the podcast. Subscribe to In The Click's YouTube page, watch the videos, hit the like button, and leave a comment. Please follow In The Click on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for at In The Click. Email us at intheclick at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for tuning in and for all the support. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.